Okay, now uh, I'm starting at verse 39. So this, I'm obviously not reading the entire story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Uh, we're going to read the portion of this that uh, pertains to the truth that we want you to see today. Starting in verse 39, Jesus said, uh, take away the stone. Hallelujah. Now later on, you're going to see that Jesus was already operating in faith uh, concerning uh, the resurrection of Lazarus. Uh, so taking away the stone was a faith step. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinks. See, she, she was not even on the page with faith. You know, like, Jesus, this is not going to end well for you. You know, we're going to roll the stone away from the door. He stinks. This is going to make you look bad. Lord Jesus, come on, are you out there? I mean, I'm just reading to you what it says. It's right there in your own Bible. This is not a religious environment. This is a Bible environment. Can you say amen? Just go ahead and let it get on you. It's okay. It's the Word of God. <clears throat> okay, Lord, by this time he stinks, for he's been dead for four days. Okay, so, that, so Mary and Martha were both on the natural cycle of things. You know, dealing with death, grief, the whole thing. You know, the, the, and, and not even thinking about resurrection. Then verse 40, this is an important verse. Jesus said to her, said I not unto you that if you would believe that you would see the glory of God. Now let's take a minute just to kind of take that, that verse apart. He said, believe and then see. It's not see and then believe. So that's a bit of a definition of faith right there. You believe and then you see. All right, so Jesus is acting right now in this parable or this story. He's acting as though Lazarus is raised from the dead. You know why? Because he's operating in faith. He had no fear about rolling the stone away from the door. I mean, if Lazarus is going to come out of the tomb, the stone's going to have to go. Because you're going to see Lazarus was still wrapped in grave clothes. He was going to move the stone himself when he was raised. But Jesus received him raised from the dead by faith before anything ever happened. Are, are you out there? Now, th this is what you and I need to see as mission accomplished. Okay, getting on the word by faith is the accomplishment of the mission. We're talking about stress relief. Okay, you don't have to see it to have it. If you have it by faith, you will see it. But when you have it by faith, you go ahead and act like it's done. Who are you out there? Now, so <clears throat> that, that works into everything you say and do. Because if you act like and talk like it's not there, then your faith, even if it was working, it stops working. Because you, you hinder the flow and the operation of that. How, how many of you are out there? See, most of the time, because people are on a natural cycle, they judge things by the way they feel about it. You ever, you ever notice when the world is talking, it's how do you feel? They hold a microphone up to some. How do you feel right now? Well, wow, you know, 50 people just got killed. I don't feel good at all. But, but that's what they want to hear. It's all about how do you feel? How does it feel to lose your closest family members? How does it feel? Are, are you there? And of course, that's stress inducing. Because in that situation, there's no answer for them. They're, and they're saying we're doomed. Which is just going to heap more Pressure on top of them. Are you out there? Now, you and I are in a completely different situation. Okay, we have a covenant with God. We have eternal relationship with him that we're now in. And we're looking forward to great things to come. So there is no bad that can be heaped on us. 
Woo, are you out there? There is no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus. There's no bad stories. There's no bad news. Come on now. Even death is a victory for us. And the Bible says to rejoice. Who are you out there? Because once again, the devil was proven to be wrong and a liar. When a, when a believer dies, they go on to be with the Lord, which is better, the Bible says. So, to, you know, don't, don't get jealous because of the loved ones that have gone on before you, but they're actually doing better than you are. Because they don't have that physical body to deal with that you're dealing with right now. The bills and, you know, and all the other stuff. <clears throat> Hallelujah. God is good. So Jesus is already on the page with Lazarus being raised from the dead. And he's acting it out. And as a matter of fact, he's going to say with his mouth that, you know, I'm doing this because they're watching. But I know that you've already heard me. In fact, let's read that. Uh, verse 41, it says, Then they took away the stone from the place uh, where he was dead. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. You see that? By faith, this is already done. I've already prayed. I've already, uh, I'm in fellowship with God. And for the record, you should understand that if you're saved and you're filled with the Holy Ghost then you should be walking in continual fellowship with him. Pra uh, a phrase years ago, practicing the presence. In, in fact, you should never be without the presence of God, the tangible, recognizable presence of God in your life. Any moment, you, you stop out on the street, just walking down the street and he's with you. Riding in your car, he's with you. So we're not trying to get somewhere that we aren't yet. We're already there in relationship with him. Are you out there? So this is living by faith, the promises of God. So you can clearly see how that's going to just take the stress and the pressure off of your life. Because you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. In fact, if you're acting fearful and stressed out, that's a good sign that your faith is not working right at that point. All right, so look at verse 42. And, and then Jesus said, And I knew that you hear, I know, knew that you hear me always, but be, because he's always speaking in the present tense, but because of the people that stand by me, I said it that they may believe that you have sent me. See, in other words, I'm going to pray this prayer, Father. And I'm going to make these statements for their benefit. I know you've already heard me. This is not even necessary between me, me and you. You've already heard me. But I'm going to do it for their benefit. Ooh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, that's the life of faith. Many believers find themselves in situations where, okay, this is a believer, but they're an unbelieving believer. And so, yeah, okay, we'll go ahead and act this out for you. Okay, so you can see what it looks like. But it's actually not necessary. Because I already have it. And I didn't do anything to get it to begin with. And I have it by faith, so it's already done. So I don't actually have to do anything to keep it either. Except just walk in you. Oh, it's a relationship. Oh, we already have the relationship. Are you out there today? Glory to the King. Okay. So we're, we're, in a moment, we're actually going to throw ourselves into a couple of bad situations to illustrate how you and I do this. See, and, and that's how we're going to call it mission accomplished. All right. But let's keep reading. Verse 43. Uh, and when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. Woo. He that was dead came forth. Remember, they had rolled the stone away. He was bound hand and foot with grave clothes. His face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, loose him and let him go. All right, so here, here's, uh, we're going to make a little demonstration. All right, so you have a problem in life. We're just going to use this thing as an illustration. 
Okay, you're, you're sunk in debt. You have symptoms, you know, on your body. Okay, your marriage, your family is not doing well. Okay, you're, you're in, a, you know, you're in a, a debilitated situation. At what point do you declare victory? When you get out of the chair? Or when you believe? See, Jesus said, believe and then you see. So I'm going to receive, just like he did with Lazarus, I'm going to receive it done right now while I'm still sitting here in the chair. And call it done. This is what Abraham did to give uh, birth to Isaac. He did not look at the condition of his body or Sarah's, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, that what he had promised he was also able to perform. Okay, so faith, so Abraham, here's the thing about Abraham that you have to understand. His name was Abram. Okay, Abraham translated means father of a multitude. And you remember we read in Genesis chapter 15 where Abraham, Abram is saying to God, there's no multitude, there's not even a son yet. God took him outside and showed him the stars, got his faith going again, come on now. Now you're sitting here because of Abraham's faith. We're the seed of Abraham. For that matter, so is Jesus. Yeah, Jesus was, Jesus was born into the earth through the natural seed of Abraham. Who are you out there? Okay, so uh, here you are in life. How are you going to get out of this situation? Are you going to try to work your way out of it? Or are you going to believe your way out of it? Well, considering the fact that faith works better than your personal abilities. You know, uh, and we, we talked about this last week. God has actually given us the privilege because of who we are in Christ Jesus He's given us the privilege to operate in faith, which is the same power that he created the worlds by and with. It's the same power. So he gave you, now, now think about what a privilege that is. To have the opportunity to live and operate by faith. Wow, that's like... Wow. So why should I struggle? I'm going to hear the promise, believe it, and receive it. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe it, then I'll see it. Exactly the way Jesus said. I, I don't have to see it to believe it. But when you, when you get to the feeling part, see people, how do you feel? Well, what does that have to do with believing? You need to understand the way you feel has nothing to do with your believing. I'll tell you why. It's two different things. The way you feel is your soul. What you believe is your spirit. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. God is good. As a matter of fact, if you would please, I want to show you one of those. Turn over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. The Apostle Paul is actually going through a list of problems and difficulties that be believers can find themselves in. But then he says, but you know what? Uh, verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith... According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So now you see what Jesus was doing at Lazarus' tomb. So if Jesus had walked up to Lazarus' tomb and said, you know, you know you're right, Mary. He stinks. And so we're, we're just going to have a little, uh, you know, funeral service here. 
and we'll all just go back to the house and eat potato salad. What do they call that? Awake? Awake? What's that? What, what is awake for? I mean, I don't remember seeing that in the Bible. Are you with this? So the New Testament, even in something like death, you should not be handling death like the world. Which when you do, it's another way of saying what we're believing is not working. Ooh, that got quiet all of a sudden. Hallelujah. So whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If it's, if it's one of your loved ones, family members, or somebody that you knew that went on to be with the Lord, if or they died, if they were saved and you knew them to be saved, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For you to stand there and act like they didn't go, who are you to decide that their faith didn't work? It's the same promise that you're standing on. You see how debilitating that is? That's the reason why it undermines people's believing. Oh, I'm glad I came to church today. Somebody out there ought to say amen. Okay, so uh, when we were in the wheelchair of life, we were weak and frail. Now, this is just a, a bit of an illustration, okay, weak and frail. I know that's the way I was. Now, though, because I believe the promises of God, I've gotten out of the chair. And I'm strong and vital. You know, people are uh, always trying to get me to quit. Yeah, for one reason or another. They think I'm old or something. You know, you should have retired a long time ago, Pastor. Wow, you know, I just got started just a few years ago. <laughs> I'm not tired. I'm not worn out. I'm, I'm not in pain. I'm not sick. There's nothing wrong with me. And even if there was something, I, I wouldn't deal with it like that. And neither should you. See, see, uh, you know, what I'm doing is a demonstration for your benefit so that you, you can see how it works. Glory to the King. Okay, so let's look at another one. Go with me over to uh, Mark chapter 5. This is the story of the woman with the issue of blood. You need to see her faith working. Now we're just going over a little bit of this, okay? But learning how to use your faith in the promises of God is the place. See, when, when you, um, like we demonstrated, when, when uh, I was in the wheelchair of life and I got a hold of the word, when I believed it was when the mission was accomplished. Now, it's, it's the, the, the point of victory is not for when you see it. The point of victory, and you, so th this is like getting your mind renewed. Okay, we're going to come out of the old and into the new. We're going to stop feeling it, it like, you know, the, the feeling is telling you the truth anyway. We're going to leave that behind and we're going to come into the faith world. So when you receive it by faith, Jesus said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. See, believe and see. But when did he say you have it? When you pray, believing. When you believe is when you get it. So it's yours then. That's when you shout the victory and a mission accomplished. Hallelujah. That's, that's the way faith works. Somebody out there ought to go ahead and say amen. Let's watch the woman at the, 
uh, with the issue of blood, do that. Verse 25, certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years had suffered many things of many physicians, had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. She was in the wheelchair of life. When she heard of Jesus. Okay, so that means she heard the word. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind. So she had to decide, okay, I'm going to press out of this. Came in the press behind, grabbed the hem of his garment, acting on the word of God. Okay, for she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. So uh, if, if she was, uh, she was actually in, in worse than a wheelchair. Because uh, with, with her expenditure of blood out of her body, she was actually a candidate to be stoned in public by the law of Moses, which was still in effect until Jesus went to Calvary. So she took her life in her hands and said, when I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And that's exactly what happened. She said it. She believed the promise. See, that was the promise that she was given. Hallelujah. When I do that, I've got it. I shall be made whole. Believe and then see. Now, then the seeing part followed her believing part. See, she said, she believed and said and then acted. Jesus turned around and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples said, well, a lot of people are touching you. But no, he, he meant there was some, another kind of a touch. So her faith put a demand on the power. Hallelujah. Now, there's many things about faith that, that believers need to uh, understand. Faith is a power that um, it actually destroys things. Jesus talked about the mountain, blow the mountain into the sea. By faith, are you out there? So there's an there's a aggressive side of faith, and then there's a passive side. A passive faith event is receiving something done. Hallelujah. So this woman, what, what she did was when she grabbed the hem of Jesus' garment, she had, had already said it, believing in her heart. And so her action of faith was her point of contact, and she received it done. And Jesus knew it was done because her faith drew the power out of him. It says he... He knew that virtue had gone out of him. Draw, drew it through his clothes. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Going to ask you to stand to your feet, if you would, please. Thank God for his grace. Somebody out there ought to say amen. <laughs> Believe and see. So when she heard about Jesus was when faith came. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Okay, that's when faith came, and then she said, and then she acted on what she said. She, she acted on the word, which was the promise that she was given. If anybody touches his garment, believing to receive, they're going to get, they're going to get what they're after. And so she was healed. Okay, so uh, we've all been given the entire world, you should understand that, the entire world has been given a promise that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise of God. So how do you know when people get saved? Well, when they believe the promise and act on it. It's not how you feel about it. It's not the way it looks. Amen. You see, we, we're not in the position of being able to judge a person's. That's the Lord that does that. Okay. So, uh, but it's possible that you are not saved or else you don't know that you're saved. How do I know I'm saved? Well, you believe the promise and then you say. See, that's, that's what the word of faith is that's 
talked about in Romans chapter 10. You say you're saved. Just like Abraham called himself the father of a multitude. You say, I'm saved. That's your testimony. That actually is your proof. How do I know I'm saved? Well, you said so. You said it. So if you are not saved or are unsure of your salvation and you say, I want to make sure today, I want to get saved today, I want to make sure that there's nothing missing or hidden in my life. If I'm talking to you, just shoot your hand up like that. We're just going to pray right where you are. Any person in the room looking around, hallelujah. God is good. Praise the name of Jesus. By the way, uh, you should bring your uh, family, friends, relatives, or enemies that are unsaved or that, that don't know Jesus like you know they should, bring them to church so they can hear the word and act on the word. You know, young people, children, God is good. All right, so let's do this together. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. The price you paid for me at Calvary. Your precious blood was shed for me. You took all of my punishment upon yourself so that I could be delivered. Thank you, Jesus, for the full gospel, for my salvation. I receive by faith everything that you died to give me. In the name of Jesus, I believe it and I receive it and call it done right now in the name of Jesus. Amen.